Hey there, hey welcome there. back to our channel. So today we're going to continue this new tradition that Phil is going to brew. Yay! A very delicious Fenghuang Danzou Mi Lan Xiang. Mm, I'm super looking forward to it. If you're new to the channel, please click that subscribe button so you'll know whenever we... Uh, Oh, and hit the notify bell so that you'll know whenever we post new videos or go live or do any of all the super fun things we do. We cover everything from vlog to how to brew and all kinds of cool information about Chinese tea and its culture. So be sure to do that. And if at any point during the video you find this content helpful, please think about giving us a thumbs up. Yes, let's dive in. Let's get that kettle on. nervous? No, I'm not nervous <laughs> at all actually and uh, I'm pretty excited. This is a really, the leaf of this den song is just, uh, it's divine. The roasty, roasty chocolatey floral. I'm sure there's going to be some nice floral elements in that den song. I'm very excited to brew it. I'm a little bit concerned about the leaf amount and the gaiwan size but we'll see that as we go. I'm going to be using all of the skills that we talk about on this our channel. This is another trap as not, not so worried. much about the, the trap. It's just the compared to last time we did, which you know nothing about the tea. This time mm. you know the tea, but under the same name, the teas could be quite different. Absolutely. Do you brew them identically? Right. So uh, that's the mini challenge is. Right. So I'm going to be using, as I was saying, all the sort of intuitive brewing skills. We love to talk about intuitive brewing on this channel. And I think sometimes it's good to go back and just talk about what intuitive brewing is. Does that mm. mean I'm just going to use the force and use magic powers and just guess? Absolutely not. I'm going to do my best to, uh, I know it's a dense hong, I know it's an oolong, pretty dark and roasty. I'm going to use... And the leaf amount is, I put that there, you don't have to use it all, you choose how much you yeah, use. Yeah, exactly. Okay? So I'm going to use a, the guideline that we've talked about before, which I'm going to... Seems like the kettle's ready, so I'm going to dive in. I'm going to warm up the teaware a little bit and we'll rock and roll. But yeah, I'm pretty... I'm not too nervous um, because um, I think this tea is going to be pretty friendly to brew. And by that I mean it smells pretty darn good mm. and smells like a good quality tea. It has tea. that nice mm. caramel but not overly yeah. roasted kind of a, yeah. with a yeah. little bit of floral. No. Yes, it smells it, really it good. It smells like a good quality tea and in general good quality teas are quite um, friendly to brew. They're forgiving and of course delicious which is really why we're brewing them. Um, so anyway, in we go with our leaf. We'll put that there. Come on out. There we go. Everybody in. Yeah, I'm going to use it all. So it's... It, I, kind of I heard the complaint about I put too much leaf. Right? It's, it's quite a mount. It's quite a lot. Uh, I, as you can see, the gaiwan is... Um, I think it's probably a little bit more than two-thirds full, which is the general recommendation. But I can also adjust my steep time to accommodate that. My water temperature is going to be pretty much locked in around the boiling point because this is a good tea. I don't want to miss out on any of the goodness. Mm. And I will give it a rinse. As an oolong, I think it deserves a good rinse, a nice snappy, quick rinse. I won't be lingering here. Oh, right away, right away I'm hit with a gorgeous floral smell. Just wonderful. Pop, puff up off of the uh, steam when the, when the hot water... Hit. I don't know if you caught it over there, but it was right no. under my nose. So I will, um, I will waft it over to you <laughs> and pass you the guy one for you to try and enjoy some oh of that. Oh my god, now I smell that. Right? It's divine. Okay, this is, I'm really I excited love that, about this. Uh, honey, you know, uh, Mi Lan Xiang, right? Honey orchid mm. is um, not necessarily like so specific about orchid. Even the rinse water it's has that a kind of a aroma. sweet floral. Yes. Really sweet, floral. thick, sweet floral, p puffed up yeah. from the uh, from the uh, aroma. Do you want to smell the? Uh, it's a subtle, but the rinse liquor even has a pretty nice aroma. I think it's worth it. Have a little smell. No comment. It was worth it. Okay, trust it's, me. No, <laughs> I'm ju I just want to sip when I smell something so good. Yes. Okay. Yeah, fair I want to smell fair it enough. and dump it to kind of feel like. So what I'm looking at now is the rinse was pretty quick, pretty in-out as you saw. Mm -hmm. I had a quick look at the liquor color. You mm -hmm. also saw it. 
um, I'm going to be pretty much flash infusing my first infusion based on the amount of leaf and the uh, giving nature of this tea leaf. So let's go for it. I think I'm not going to be counting to 10 or anything like that. I might give it a second or two. Like I'm not going to rush. I'm not going to be sort of going crazy. I'm having a peek at the liquor color and I'm going to take it out. I talked you through that, didn't I? Great job. Let's see how the brewing... And like, there's no need to shake the guy one like crazy like I just did. It's in fact not recommended. So just maybe give a gentle pull and let the water drip. You don't want to shake up the leaf unnecessarily. It will, it will slightly change your infusion. I've been coached against that in the past. <laughs> so I'm self-correcting, which is also a part of intuitive brewing. It's also, you know, be nice to yourself. You know, it's okay. It's not, it's not a, it's not an exam. Please. Thank you. I feel like if you don't brew well. Smell that. You would say that on the Woody. serving pot. Wow. Mm. The aroma is great. The liquor. I, I think him I did a good job to use this mini serving pot because I love it. Yeah, I really love this pot too. Actually, she oh, thinks really? somehow that I don't love it, but I love this little colored effect. It's a really cute, like a little choir boy. <laughs> All right, back to the tea. But the aroma has that floral. There's some woodiness. I'm I'm really in love with the aroma. Mm. Which is not surprising. It's a dense home, you know. Mm. It's really nice. My brew is decent. Um, it's not perfect. My, my thought, so again, part of intuitive brewing, again, it's not guessing, it's not magic, is to sip your tea and think, hey, what am I going to do next on the next infusion? Mm. Um, so for me, this is not, I didn't wreck this infusion. This is really lovely, uh, this sip. The liquor captures that floral creaminess and it has a nice thick mouthfeel. Yeah. I mean, it's a really nice tea. I feel like I could have been a little bit snappier I, you saw I hesitated. I had a quick look at the liquor color. Again, mm. I didn't wreck the infusion. It's not ripping my face off by any stretch. I think the tea is a little bit too friendly to do that, but it's a touch strong for our liking. I know yeah. I'm tuning for myself. I'm tuning for my guest, Jen, which is how you should intuitive brew as well, is also consider who you're brewing for. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so those are some things to consider. I like how sweet it smells, but... Uh... It's not overly sweet. Right. Overly... In the liquor, it's not overly sweet. Yeah, yeah. But it has that sweet floral and then combines mm. with um, this rich... Oh, let me find some words for you. And also, I don't know if you notice on the dry leaf, even though it's... Um, you know, like even though it's Mi Lan Xiang Dan Chong, they have so many different shapes in the leaf. This one is slightly smaller, not as long. Mm. As a I have to admit, the, I didn't notice that. Yeah, so that was which means it, it will look more dense in the guy one, which should affect how long you steep the tea. Very good point. Mm. Subtle, really subtle, but a mm. great point. Okay, so with all of that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and have another infusion. It's a really nice roast. Mm. Trying to be a good boy and don't shake that. Always, oh, I have that habit of shake, 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 mm. shake too. It's tempting. I also got in trouble for that. <laughs> I'll just retrieve your cup. Yeah, this is a mm. really, really nice dental. Mm. It has that uh, dental stripping to make me want KFC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're sitting here um, just before meal time. So this is going to definitely get us ready for a meal. Mm. Should have shoot this earlier before my bed is so empty. deepened sense of um, 
fruity floral now. Mm. Yes. Right. Yes. The that honey sweet. Coming. That honey fruity. Mm. Yeah. I quite. I have been quiet as I'm pretty much always when I drink tea. But I mean, I the reason is I really enjoy to have the tea aroma circle in my mouth and my nose. Mm. You know how I like. I really like uh, the lingering power of this tea when mm -hmm. I my mouth is so empty. There's no more liquor in it, but it's very aromatic in a very pleasant way. The floral, I think, floral aroma, floral aroma. It's kind of the combination of all of the elements that make the tea great. Sort of mm. a floral with a tinge of that honey honey floral sweet yeah, and that's mm. the honey isn't in my mouth i don't feel like this is a sweet tea this has, no. has a sweet aroma nose right yes uh, it's only in, those high in the spaces. nose the high yes but that's a great point i want to i took it i took the chance while you were talking to actually do that so in our how to taste video which for me was a big game changer in diving into being able to appreciate really good tea the step that I found, one of the steps I found most interesting was that last step, which is you've already, so first hold it in the mouth and breathe over it was very interesting. But even more interesting to me was to swallow slowly, leave the mouth closed, which is why you were so quiet, mm. leave the mouth closed after the swallow and take a few more breaths, two, three, four breaths over your mouth and throat, which are full of tea aroma and tea essence and pay attention to that. That's a very easy one to miss and a really big game changer, especially in appreciating really good tea because that's where you're going to detect um, yun and things like that. Mm. Um, so, uh, so while you were chit-chatting, I was doing the same thing and appreciating that. First in the swallow, that slow mm. swallow, you really grab onto the thickness of the liquor, which might be an elusive, well, certainly for me, that was a very elusive concept. Right. Give me that. <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> what a host. Give me that. What do you think of your brew? Um, my first two infusions were good. I think they were at least good. And I think the th thing that I'm happy about is I feel like my attempt to improve the second infusion actually worked. I mm. feel like my second infusion was an improvement on my first infusion, which is all I can really ask for. What did you think of my brew? Wow, <laughs> unfortunately I have a slightly different idea <laughs> about oh. the second brew is a correction. I feel like the second brew, you mentioned about that, the speed I think was a little bit slow. Still too slow? Yes. Oh, now we're hitting the difference. I felt like it was, uh, you felt like the liquor was too strong? It's about the same as about the, the same. first okay. infusion. Okay. So because now, in terms of the time, you cannot use the same exactly. parameter because the leaf Every, is already infused. The leaf is open, but my kettle was slightly cooler. So now I've got a fresh okay. hot kettle, yes. full open leaf. I'm only on the third infusion. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to work a little bit harder to get a better grade this time, which really means I've got to focus on flash infusion. Mm. Now this can be tricky if you're just starting out with a guy one because sometimes it's just there's just some fumbling to do mm. to get the lid ready and whatnot. Um, so in the end, folks, don't panic. Mm. Everything will be fine, especially, mm. like I said, if you've got a decent tea, but I am gonna pay a little bit more attention. Maybe I'll try and put down the lid properly right away so I do not have to fumble as much. Mm. So I've set my lid up, pre-set my lid, and I'm just going straight up in and out. You see, even the color is also, pretty dark. even though you're speed, like not speeding, <laughs> Yeah, like it's at least the same speedy, as the uh, first infusion. brew is still yeah. pretty strong. Like usually one or second to third brew is... The big one. Is the yeah. fastest brew. It's the, the one you've got to be quickest with. Mm. Mm. Of course, it depends on how you rinse it. True. Right? Yeah. And I gave it, I gave it a gentle rinse. Mm. So it didn't get too... You know, I, I just don't... I never want to give away too much to my rinse. That's why I'm a little bit greedy. Mm. Mm, that's divine. Take a moment and smell things that's like good. The, uh, the hot, the mm. hot aroma, the lid. Really fun. 
This is really brown sugar, and it's mm -hmm. also rough brown sugar, like a not even grocery mm -hmm. brown sugar. It has more mm -hmm. elements in it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Check out the lid. The lid is really interesting. I didn't want to pass you the lid and it all go away. That's why it was... Uh... Mm. Hmm. It has that uh, woodiness with the floral. Yeah, I got a little nuttiness, but I was Nutty. just... Like a dry hay, mm. like a dry straw kind of thing. The floral, it's changing too. These yeah. aromas are always changing, which is super exciting. One of the reasons we love tea is those volatiles, the, the, the volatility of the aroma and the transformation. Mm. Hmm. And the room goes quiet. When the tea is good, I think I hit it. Based on how much you're talking, I think I... How do you think? I want to reassess. I'll let you sip it. I'll let her finish the cup. It's a little bit unfair to ask for a reassessment. She's in the middle of tasting. Okay. Anyway, I'm really enjoying this tea. And maybe, like I said, it's a forgiving tea, right? So mm. it'd be hard to beat this one up. Yes, absolutely. Oh, I really like how that... Like, right. This is very pleasant, okay? Whatever I say next is not against you or stuff. <laughs> Just a thought. In terms of a brewing, a lot of times we really dive into the brewing and we do all we and another time we can lower the water temperature to help. But really a, the fundamental thing is set when before the brew even started is look at the vessel and look mm. at the leaf and decide how much leaf you put. Why it's important is there's a limit of how fast, no matter what, there yes. is a limit of how fast we can be when the water is in and out. Mm -hmm. That's in, like, we cannot Yeah, there's a constraint there. That's right. It's, exactly. Yeah. So I think that set so, the tone of this whole series right. of a brew, no matter how fast you do. So my leaf amount, really? Okay. I don't know. I was going to say, I, it sounds like I probably should have been a little bit more conservative with the leaf amount, but when I open the guy one, but it, I guess it's not fully open yet. Yes. And the, I'm pretty full already. So the... And also, like, uh, even though in our video we say, okay, yan right. cha, okay, those are straight oolong or a bald oolong, you put one third, you put two thirds. Those are, are just guidance. Just for people who didn't you hear that. You cannot just, yes. If you put a small leaf, like a say mm. you put the same at two thirty. You're not gonna have this similar right. like intensity. Rogue is a You gotta make powder, micro adjustments to right? so accommodate so the leaf size. In general, you mm. put two thirds, but if it's a shui xian, you probably put the full guy one because the leaf is big. Once it's brewed, right? The the uh, the leaf, the real leaf amount or the weight is different. Mm -hmm. We're just the using the, area, if you yeah, want to go we'll that use route. the volume to estimate. If mm. you brew, say, uh, uh, our top grade Wasam Su Chong, it's minor, minor, very small leaves. You mm -hmm. cannot put the same um, volume wise, same amount right. as, say, Dian Hong or stuff. Right. So that's very, and that kind of uh, happens before you put the leaf in the Gai Wan. Right. Right. But in general, in terms of what you can do, I think you did a great job. Thank you. Mm. Me too. And I think it's because of what I mentioned early on, which is a good tea is going to be pretty nice to you, pretty mm. forgiving. Mm. And not to mention a joy to And I think that's, that's kind of like a fun thing mm. of a tea brewing. And that's why... Uh, you know, there's a standard like a machine you put a pot it give you the stuff. It's cool But I feel like brewing tea seeing how good I did this job or mm. oh, I messed this up Or maybe I can improve next time. It's like a, it's a fun. It's a learning, but it's also a fun experience It's not like yeah, you know, I yeah, absolutely
I hope it didn't destroy your confidence or anything like no, that. No, not I at just... all. If anything, it uh, it's. I had that notion when I put what I forgot, and I just let all the leaf drop. And I was like, but my backout, there's no real backout, right? The guy one is moistened, the leaf is in there. What am I gonna do? I'm not gonna pull it out. I'm mm. just gonna do my best. And like you said, it all worked out. Mm -hmm. My confidence is not shattered or destroyed <laughs> and nor should yours be. It's, it's tea, it's having fun, it's sipping with people you like. I like her. <laughs> I'm so glad you still like me. <laughs> And I appreciate the, uh, you know, the input and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's really fun to. And you can try to, to lower because when the water temperature is slightly lower, mm -hmm. you increase the brewing time again, mm -hmm. right? Which kind of minimize that. But I could just not increase you it, could, right? And just yeah, you could out. just lower the temperature a little bit. That also. Right, and helps. keep the infusion speed yeah. to to lighten up the infusion. Mm. This is really like a long, like a lingering. I just love how mm. it feels in my mouth and it just that uh, roasty, but not quite like a roasty. It's not a, some, it's not a tea you, you taste it or you smell it. You yes. feel like, oh, it's a roasty tea. It's so enhancing kind of a roasting that mm -hmm. I feel a lot of that pleasant deep rich floral scent yeah and especially the creamy floral i feel mm. like that roasty element is contributing to that creaminess and the floral mm. but not greasy yet not at all no mm. and that uh, sweetness the sweetness on the nose but not in the liquor that mm. for me it gives that extra fun to taste the sweetness really does lean towards that that raw honey, like yeah. it's, it's not a bold, yes. big, sugary honey. It's mm. just that it's like a really flowery honey, right? Exactly like the tea name says, right? Mm -hmm. It's a... Mm. And this brood leaves. Pardon? The brew leaves. Mm. I think it should, yeah, savor. <laughs> Even if you're just getting started and you're not sure what you're trying to smell, just smell it. It's so relaxing. Mm. Right? I would just say, uh, don't worry about uh, fancy words and trying to detect notes. Just have a smell for the sake of your own enjoyment. It's totally like, that's what I'm getting from this right now. It's yeah. just so calming and uh, delightful. Mm. So this was a really delightful tea and a really good experience for me. Um, I like mm. this series where I brew. I yeah. really enjoyed it. Um, me too. It's true that in the past, as you asked in the beginning, are you nervous? Um, and in the past, I've been pretty nervous because of talking with you guys and brewing, I felt a little overwhelmed, but... You're doing a great job talking yeah, yeah, and brewing. I feel like, so as with anything, right? Even with your brewing, just your plain brewing, if you're just looking to brew better, I guess the key is just practice. Mm. Keep on practicing, keep brewing, keep sipping, pay attention, check out that video about how to taste tea. Again, a real game changer for me personally. Um, really helped a lot. Great tips from Jen on how to get the most out of your tea there. So I'm looking forward to doing plenty more of these. Yeah, absolutely. So guys, if you've got any value, oh, sorry. Oh, it's great, that's your gist. I don't do well with subscription. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a bit of a tongue twister, but <laughs> I'll give it a shot here. If you got some value out of this video, please do give us a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. And don't forget to click that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you'll know whenever we go live or put up a new video about all the awesome things we cover about Chinese tea. Until next time. Keep steeping. Keep steeping.